Come on, TV, give me some of that sweet, sweet pep. anticipated video of 2020 it is the top 25 best marvel legends of the year now already i've got to say i catfished you i'm sorry this isn't the best because who can determine what the best figures are i'm no expert who is these are my top 25 favorite Marvel Legends of the Year. So I've told you it's one thing and actually it's another thing. It's kind of like NECA saying they sell action figures when actually they sell perishable items. Still a bit sore about that. But here we go, the top 25. Most other YouTube reviewers do top 10s. I'm doing top 25. Does that make me one and a half times better than everyone else? Maybe, yes, I think so. But it also means I'm very indecisive. So these are my top 25 best, most favorite, joy-sparking figures of 2020. Starting off with, of course, Stan the Man Lee himself. This figure gets the number 25 position because it's kind of an honorable mention, because it's not like the most amazing figure. The fact that it's here is, it's Stan Lee. Come on. Of course the Stan Lee figure was going to be in, in, in any top number, whether it was top 10, top 25. It's just you got to pay some, some reverence, you know? And it is a nice figure. The, the head sculpt is really good. This is the only sort of um, photorealistic figure I have because I don't collect the MCU figures. So this is a great representation of Stan and still fits in with other Marvel Legends. I have him front and center in my collection. The big Captain America shield with the signature on there is a lovely touch. What kind of, you know, makes it just an honorable mention is it's just the basic suited body, well, casual suited body that we've had many, many times. The, the loafers are so difficult to balance. It's amazing he stayed on the Spinatron 5000 for as long as he did. So he still gets a very fond honourable mention. Number 25, Stan the Man Lee. My figure of the year is Riders Punisher. Coming in now, we have Rage from the New Warriors. I remember way, way back at the start of this channel, I did a top 10 figures and I had Rage on there. And people were like, what? Rage? How? how? How is Rage a great figure? Look, I, I just, I love him. I love the luchador mask. I love the detailing on, on his leather jacket. I love the fact he's a, a, a heavy, chonky boy for the fact that he is just a normal legend. The jacket is nice, soft material that you can like pull away. He doesn't have any extras, no, no changeable heads or hands or anything. But what you get is just a really fun figure that stands out on the shelf. Plus, it's New Warriors. I, I love 90s New Warriors. And he's got a great kind of expression on his face really poseable and like a dynamic sort of look stands out on the shelf like his you know luchador style i dig rage he deserves a place in the top 25 now just behind rage we have the white rabbit from the demo goblin wave Gosh, it feels like a decade ago <laughs> these figures came out. But again, I love this figure because she's she's bright, colourful, bonkers looking, really unique. Um, she stands out on the shelf with her big bunny ears. And there's not, I don't think, I was about to say there's not too much reuse. But actually, honestly, I'm terrible at spotting. This whole thing might be reused. There might even be a character with these ears that I didn't even realise. So I won't go that far. But I will say this combination of parts, pieces and paint look terrific. I've taken the blast effect off of her umbrella because that's one thing that like it looks like she's firing her umbrella but her face does not say i'm engaged in combat <laughs> it's it's a very 
meh face. If she is engaged in combat, she's she's very over it. But just as, as a standing figure here with the blast effect taken off, I think she makes a great pose. She's wacky, she's crazy, she's kind of cool. I dig her so much with the fluffy boots, the, the corset, and just the cute little button nose. Yeah, white rabbit rates very highly. Gosh, that was difficult to say. Let me try one more time. White rabbit rates quite highly. Ah, did it. My figure of the year is the retro kingpin. Coming in now, we have a very recent figure, the Cyborg Spider-Man, with the head from the Craven 2 pack that I put on here, because I finally found a use for it. I always liked the sculpt of the head, I just thought it was stupid that he's like smiling, but all beaten up. But with Cyborg Spider-Man, it works. He's smiling because he survived. <laughs> he survived the encounter and he's been patched up with some badass cyborg parts. I would be smiling too. Plus he's like holding the mask head. And I always, I, whenever I have a character like holding their masked head, I sort of think it in my mind like, you know, actually it's it's not a cloth mask, it's like a, a sort of a solid mask like cosplayers wear. So that kind of works for me. So we get the cool cyborg eye there. The, the cyborg arm, like just cyborgs are awesome. Of course he's gonna be in, in my top countdown. A bit of a wash on here would look a bit nice. The, the, the silver looks a little plasticky, but I will forgive it. I will allow it. Because also we get a hint at what a new Spider-Man like 90s body would look like. Take off all the cyborg stuff and you've got yourself a really nice, brightly colored uh, 90s Spider-Man. So come on, Marvel, you know what to do. Just take some away and give us a, a brighter Spider-Man because I like the retro Spider-Man that came out, but he does feel very old school, very retro. With these brighter paint jobs, this is more 90s and throw in the cyborg parts and oh gosh, yeah, I really love this guy. Coming up now, we have our first representative from the Age of Apocalypse. It is the Dark Beast. And now this is a character I've always been a fan of since he came out. I just love evil Hank McCoy. There's something deliciously kind of wicked about him. And this figure captures him perfectly. He's on the basic uh, 90s X-Men Beast buck, which is a really great buck. Great articulation. Not that I actually worry about that too much, but he does have the lovely butterfly joints that people seem to love. And he's got his great sort of metallic, shiny, uh, uh, pants, legs, I guess. Uh, plus with the braids in the hair, the evil snarling smile there. He's got his little ring, um, ringlet earrings as well. There's no extras with this character except for the standing hand, I think. I think he comes with a standing hand, doesn't he? But I'm never going to pose him like that because I will inevitably knock him off the shelf. But I think he just looks absolutely terrific. Such a great figure to have for our Age of Apocalypse line. I'm a, I'm a sucker for expressive faces and this is a really, really expressive face. So Dark Beast rates very highly in the top 25 countdown. My favorite 2020 figure is Retro Wave Kingpin. Coming up now and keeping it with the mutants, we have Retro Vintage Gambit. Now look, I really like this character, but I can't put him too high because he is really just a repaint with a slightly different, you know, set head of hair. So I, I know that if I put him too high, a lot of people would be like, how can you put Gambit so high? He's just a repainted figure. And like, yeah, I get it. But again, I really like him because it's so 90s because they really have just copied the paint job from the very basic kind of prototype mid 90s, early 90s Toy Biz figure and updated it in this great kind of way. You get a sort of comparison from old to new and the colors look beautiful. They've colored in the cards. So he has his throwing hand with the cards as well, which I've put on the other Gambit. So that just works so great. I love the shiny pink. I love the blue around his neck and his uh, like headpiece. I think this works terrific. Paired up with the new Rogue, which I haven't got yet. She's on the way. I think these two make such a nice pair, the Mr. and Mrs. X. One thing that's kind of annoying is... He doesn't, he doesn't grip tightly enough onto his uh, bow staff. So I kind of have to have the bow staff on the ground. Otherwise, it'll stay there for a little bit, but inevitably it will fall down. But I'm willing to forgive that. I can allow that because Gambit, Remy LeBeau coming out here with all his translucent playing cards, the throwing ones, bright, colorful, pops off the shelf. That's my kind of figure. Now we have a big chunky boy. We've got Toxin. This is a figure that hasn't really featured on many top tens I've noticed and I get that. He's quite an obscure character and you know, people can say it's just a Monster Venom repaint, but what a repaint it is. First of all, this character gets a lot of points for me because I am a Toxin fan. I love how monstrous and grotesquely body horror this kind of character is. Plus, I mean, just look at the craziness going on here with these extra symbiotes 
Leo tendrils. This is just absolutely wonderful. A real pain if you want to like fit him in a tightly confined uh, display case or something. So he needs his space, but he deserves the space because also look Look at all of the detailing on his head. Again, my terrible camera won't quite pick it up, but the head has so much texture to it. It's really lumpy and, and gnarled. He's got his green tongue slobbering out here. Extra paintwork could have been given to the mouths on his symbiote, uh, sort of bushy rosebush symbiote tendrils coming out here. That's something that one of these days I will sit down with some paints I'd add some paint to those. But today is not that day. <laughs> Tomorrow's not likely either. But look, he's, he's big, he's huge, giant big claws, gnarly face. I love Monster Toxin. He goes on the list. My favorite 2020 figure, it's Benapool. Now we have from the two pack, Pyro. Now this is a figure that has so much going for it, but also a few areas to complain about as well, mainly the flame effects. A character whose very mutant ability is to create amazing creatures and shapes out of flames. So what does Hasbro do? They pack him in with the same generic flame effects that everyone else has. It's like, come on son, seriously? So at least I've given him one of the Johnny Storm flame effects to come out of his, uh, what are they called? Spooters? I don't know, whatever spoots out his flames. That, that looks better, at least. But what this figure really has going for it that puts him up high is the bright color scheme. You, you guys know me, all right? You, you know what's gonna, you know, tickle my fancy. It's a figure that jumps off the shelf that really stands out. And come on, bright yellow with the reds and the flames. Of course this guy's gonna go high. I actually bought him separately on his own, but in hindsight, I'm kind of thinking, ah, I kind of like that rogue too. But still, I might, I might have to sell this single one and then buy the doubles. But in the meantime, he's got a great smiling, expressive face. The fact that his eyes are covered means that you can get away with not having uh, like the weird mannequin looks that I don't like. So that he that, that sort of saves him there as well. So he's got a nice shading on the hair, which people don't always get as well. So there's a lot going on here with his backpack, his sculpted flame backpack as well. It's a figure that I wasn't initially like really excited about. And then once I saw him for sale, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, maybe. Then I got him in hand. I was like, yeah, Pyro's awesome. Bring on the rest of the Brotherhood. My favorite figure of the year has to be the Retro Garden Spider-Man. And now we're going back to the symbiotes with symbiote Captain America. This figure was such a surprise for me. I was totally not planning to get him at all, when I saw him announced, I was like, I don't need some random symbiote character. Then I saw that we had symbiote Gwen and Miles in the Gwen and the Ven Venompool wave, and I was like, damn it, well, I'm gonna have to get them to get the bath, and if I've got those two symbiote characters, I might as well get the Cap symbiote character so I have the whole set. And now I love symbiote Cap. He was one of my first cup of coffee in the big time reviews, and I was just gushing over this character. He's a reuse of the uh, uh, 80th anniversary cap body, which I think is a great body. He's got different boots though. His head sculpt I think looks great with the sort of venomized Captain America head with the A detailing still there, but all warped and the tongue coming out. And I love, I love the symbiote splattered across the shield that's still got the tendrils and bits coming out there. He's got the great pointy uh, claw hands. So much going on with this figure. I really, really love. I don't want a whole venomized wave of characters. I don't need them. I don't have the space for them. And I don't want to, you know, put the money <laughs> aside for them. But if I'm going to have to get them, because of, of course there's a gun to my head forcing me to, as long as they're of this quality, I ain't going to be that mad. Favorite Marvel Legend of 2020? Warpath. Coming up next, we're going to the Spider Family with the Silk fan choice figure. Now look, this is something that shows me 2020 was not all bad because I wanted this, I had a one in three chance with the options and we got Silk. So I was really pleased about that. Cindy Moon, the sort of sister character to Spider-Man, not an actual sister, don't correct me, that's Teresa Parker. I know my stuff. But she's uh, like, again, 
we don't have many figures that I, I think sort of are... Actually, no, you know what? I'm, I'm already contradicting myself. I was, was going to say that like, we don't have many like female Spider-Man type figures, but we do. But I actually just don't like many of them because I feel they're, they're kind of like too basic. Silk has a lot going on here. First of all, the black and white paint scheme with, with the red detailing really pops. She's got two heads, which always score some extra points. I'm never too sure which one to display because her unmasked head actually looks really good, but I like the ninja. I like the ninja look but the fact that also she has the cowl to go around her neck when she is unmasked is a nice nice touch the webbing is coming off the hand I'm a little bit over this effect where it's all all bunched up around the hand but still it, it looks fun it's it's got more going on there it's more three-dimensional then chuck her on a flight stand and I think she just looks terrific a really solid member of the spider-verse team I love this figure now we're drawing ever closer to the top 10 we have Age of Apocalypse Sunfire. What brings this character up? Just look at him. He is beautiful. It's the translucent plastic. It's the flame effects. It's the uh, Japanese mask, the kabuki style mask that stands out so much because the rest of him is all on fire. What a great figure to have jumping off the shelf. The whole Age of Apocalypse wave I'm a big fan of, despite some of the flaws that some characters do have. I think this one in particular just looks great. I love Sunfire. No accessories, so that does bring him down a bit. If he had more flame effects, oh gosh, come on Hasbro, just give us a flame effect pack. We'll, we'll buy a pack of flame effects and then we just do whatever we want with them. But th this figure is just great. I love the sculpted flames on the back of his head, his, uh, his like shoulder, shoulder and back flames as well. So gorgeous, so, so beautiful. I desperately want some more Age of Apocalypse figures because the character designs are just so different and out there and Sunfire is a perfect example of that. So yeah, basically Hasbro, more like this please. This is my favorite action figure of 2020. Coming in now, we go to the Avengers and 90s Avengers with the deluxe Black Widow. This figure, oh my goodness, so much going on with it. That's that's what really is the selling point for Black Widow here. She has the jetpack effects, she has all the different hands, the blasters. She has so much that you can do with this character. Plus the fact that it's such an iconic 90s look straight off of the cover of Uncanny X-Men with Captain America and Wolverine. This figure, uh, nowadays, this, this head I just think looks like what people would call um, a Karen or a, a soccer mom kind of like this this is the this is the black widow that wants to speak to the manager also just as a note i know a couple of karens and they're lovely people so don't judge by the name i i feel bad for saying that uh saying the karen not uh, you know what let's move on this is a great figure i i love what what she comes with uh she's got a very sort of like determined kind of you know super serious spy lady look about her and again just so much that you can play about with so when you put her on a flight stand, then she really does come into her own. I'm gonna try and put her on while filming because it, it can sometimes be funny when it doesn't work. <laughs> but actually in this case, look at that, nervous laughter aside, that was perfect. And you see the way she looks there, the smoke coming off of one gun barrel, firing with the other, such a dynamic figure. Ah, oh, love this one. Now it's the Spider-Man retro line and so many great figures to choose from. I'm going to put Daredevil here because just look at the shine. Look at the sculpt. He gets, a, he gets an extra Matt Murdock head as well. He's got the batons and just what a wonderful little tribute to 90s crazy redesigns. This figure, I never would have thought we would have got an, an armored Daredevil. And the fact we have, and he's such a good figure, really was a wonderful surprise for, for 2020. You can see the detail on the back as well. It's a really cool design. Like people lambasted this as a bad 90s redesign. They throw it in with like, you know, armored Batman and all that kind of thing. But I think as a Daredevil costume, this works and it's practical. It makes sense. Of course he's, he's armored. He's physically like a normal human being. So it would make sense to want to, you know, protect yourself a little bit. And this Daredevil looks well and truly protected. He looks badass. I mean, red and metallic black together as a color scheme. Yeah, that's going to look really cool. Sorry, I'm, I'm playing about trying to get into balance. There you go. Yeah, Daredevil. Huge fan of, of, of this character. Huge fan of this costume. He rates very high on the list. My figure of 2020 has got to be the strong guy wave, Deadpool. 
Coming up now, we have three characters back to back, and it is so difficult to choose what order to put them in. So you know what? This is what I'm going with now. Is it what I would think in five minutes' time? Who knows? But right now, in my hands, we have the deluxe Age of Apocalypse Apocalypse. And I know that as I start explaining why I like him, I'm going to think, oh, you should have gone higher. But... Here we are. First of all, look at the shimmer and the shine, all that metallic coloring. So great, so shiny, so pretty, I'm very easy to please. Plus, look, he has the skull. It's a really fun pose. They, they clearly decided, like, rather than deciding, right, let's just make the character and they can pose it however they want. They went, no, wait, let's do the cool. Let's make him so that he can hold the skull and be like, ha, ha, ha. And that's what they've done, and it works. This is pure apocalypse. More to the point, this is pure age of apocalypse apocalypse. This is the, the style of the character. This is his, his personality. He did revel in being evil, basically, and it works so well. Now I can also see why I am placing him lower. His, his uh, uh, neck piece and his cape and shoulder pads, they sit so lightly. You, you can plug them in, but as soon as you kind of lift them, the weight of the body will, will shift and they start to come up and raise up and that can be a little bit hmm. So yeah, he's a wonderful figure. I love him so much. I mean, almost top 10, but yep, you see, just from, from holding him, the cape has shifted and all of a sudden he starts to lose some of, some of his appeal. So I'm sure that there are some uh, customizers out there who have done some cloth capes and then the skull falls off his hand and the paint peels and suddenly I'm like, oh wait, that's what why he's not higher. But all that notwithstanding, you see, that goes to show what a great character or figure he is, that he can have all these things that wind me up, and still he rates incredibly highly. Coming in now, the next chonky boy, we have Retro Kingpin. I really wanted to have all the figures in shot, but <laughs> there's no way we're going to do this. I'm going to have to move some things around, but yes. Retro Kingpin. This was the Kingpin that I desperately wanted when we had the original Builder figure. I was like, oh gosh, I wish we just had the colourful Kingpin with the orange and the purple. And Hasbro were like, what's that? You want to spend more money on a figure? Oh, we can oblige. And they did, and it's great, and I'm not mad about that at all. Look at what they've done, because it's not just a repaint. They had to re-sculpt the, the cravat and, and the waistcoat. Was, was the waistcoat re-sculpted? Maybe it's just the cravat. Either way, I don't care. He looks great. He has the two heads again, so you know now I can have two different expressions for my, for my kingpins. That differentiates them a bit more. I love this guy. I, he's got just, just more color, more going on with, with the reds and the blues. He stands out more and just when you talk about vintage classic spider-man vintage classic marvel oh vintage classic kingpin love him what's up this is my fairly figure of the year all right guys this is it this is the top 10 and already i'm looking around at the figures i have here and the ones that i have yet to count i'm like Am I even sure of this order? I don't know because the figure in my hands I was not expecting to be in the top 10 but here we are it is for dropping his power effects everywhere. It is the Nimrod three-pack Nimrod. Oh my goodness, we are definitely running out of space here. A figure that I think a lot of people, a lot of people love and a lot of people hate. Uh, he really is a bit of a, a Marmite figure. A lot of people say he's not got great articulation. Yo, I can't argue with that. But look, I've got him in, in a kind of a, a, a walking, stepping kind of pose. And I think that actually looks re really good. It just adds a bit of imagined movement to him. It, it's great. I find that when you put a character in sort of an animated pose, your brain kind of fills in the gaps of the rest of the movement. Brains are clever like that. So I see a lot of, you know, the natural poses are with the two hands and the two blast effects standing up straight and that looks really boring uh that that, that doesn't do the the figure justice I, I don't think having one fisted hand one opened up hand the the slight step i think really does bring this character alive so much more and it makes a big difference plus you've got the different heads to play around with as well and also i love I love the butterfly, dragonfly sort of effect on the back there. He really works. He And again, he stands out. Bright pink, bright white. I love that they've gone for kind of a, a jewel kind of effect here as, as well. So it's different kinds of texture. And it's, it's not just white. It's this kind of pearlescent, kind of shining, shimmering white. Adds so much more to the character. I really, really dig this figure. Now we have one of the newer Marvel creations, 
Cosmic Ghost Rider, just barely, I think, making it into 2020. I remember I purchased this figure in 2020. I know he was obviously announced and shown beforehand. I think it, in my logic, he just about squeezes into the 2020 consideration. And I'm glad he does because this is a figure that is just so wacky, so bonkers that it's it's an absolute must buy for, for me. Bright, spiky shoulder pads, a flaming ghost head inside a tube. This is just nuts, and I re it, this is what made me want to start a uh, Marvel Cosmic shelf because I was like, I gotta get this guy, and I gotta get more folks to go with him. Uh, the fact that we're getting an, an old man Thanos that I can pair up with him, and uh, you know the, the new Silver Surfer coming out, it's gonna make for such a great display. Some folks have actually put some fairy lights inside the uh, the ball here. That is really cool. That that works so well. But just as itself, as a figure here, I'm running out of space to show him off properly. But you guys know. You guys know Cosmic Ghost Rider. I, if, if I was doing cup of coffee reviews when I bought him, I would have totally done a cup of coffee with Cosmic Ghost Rider. And I would have been singing his praises. The, the, the Marvel designers, uh, the comic book creators, were very smart. They were like... Deadpool's cool, we'll take his personality, we'll take the skulls of the Punisher and the flames of Ghost Rider and mash them all together and we get Cosmic Ghost Rider. And if you read comics, uh, his his series are really good, they're, they're, they're funny, they're tragic, I'm all for this guy. Great character, great figure. What is up, David Displays Model Behavior? These are my top picks for my favorite purchased figures of the year. So first up, we've got the Retro Collection Boba Fett. It's a good figure. Just like the vintage figure from Kenner. Love it just for that nostalgia, classic look. Next up, we've got the Toy Biz Nightcrawler. Um, great, still holds up, even though the new Hasbro one is arguably wetter. This one still stands the test of time. Then we've got the two McFarlane um, Arkham Asylum Batman and Joker. Great figures for the um, really detailed articulation and um, great sculpt work. And then we've got... Marvel Legends Moon Knight, great, good classic figure we needed. Um, the Mezco Frankenstein from the Boris Karloff film, great, um, looks great on the shelf, very detailed. And then we've got the uh, Pyro from the Pyro and Rogue 2-pack, great figure. I use the um, Human Torch fire effects to put in his uh, nozzles. I think it works better than the accessories he comes with. And then we've got the Legends Kang, sculpted great. Looks amazing. And then finally, we've got the figures toy company, Space Ghost. Um, similar to the classic Mego figures from the 70s. And then our honorable mentions, I have the retro Kingpin, Spider-Man, and DC Collectibles, Mr. Freeze. Now we're going back to Spider-Man with the retro Green Goblin. This is a figure who's made a lot of appearances in this year in various lists and things because I just... Love this figure. So any excuse to, to get him out. The bright green paint job, the cackling maniacal face, the fact he comes with a Norman Osborn head as well. So much to love about this, this figure. Uh, I've put the War Machine uh, blast effects on the back of his glider, which is just a little accoutrement that I did, but still, it adds so much to the figure. I'm going to let it bump him up a little bit as well. People don't like the eyes, I get it. A new glider would have been great. It's, essentially, it's a repaint with a couple of extra accessories, but what a great great repaint it is. We needed a classic retro Green Goblin and that is exactly what this guy is. Absolutely deserves a high place in the top 10. Now we have a street level hero and what a figure it is. When I did my top 10 legends months ago, he was ranked very highly as well. And I love this Moon Knight. It's just, the colors, are, obviously it's so basic, just white. You see, I went for the white face as well because they had the, the black one too. And I was I was torn, but then I was like, no, you know what? I just love the, the bright white block of color. Then with some really nice shading in there as well. Just a little bit of gray wash and little bits and pieces. Plus, some of his armor around the boots and the belt is more of a pearlescent kind of white that really sort of stands out more. Then, of course, he's got his accessories. He's got the bow staff, he's got the big moon sickle, and he's got the three throwing moon sickles there as well. One of which caused me so much pain and anguish months ago when I dropped it somewhere in my room and literally 
tore the place apart to find it because heaven forbid he's missing an accessory. Uh, that was, uh, I still shudder when I remember that. There's some trauma there. But yeah, this figure is just gorgeous. I really love it. A lot of people don't like the plastic capes and many people have done, you know, uh, homemade wired cloth capes. Oh, those look gorgeous. Uh, I would do something similar, but I just, I'm, I'm not that skilled in that regard. And I don't mind because I think as a dynamic pose here on his flight stand, he just looks so pretty, so great. Moon Knight, great figure for the year. Really, really happy with this one. Hey, Moral Behavior. For my number one figure this year, I choose Movie Deadpool. He is absolutely so sick. Love this figure. Next up we got... The Rider Punisher. And look, I, I know, as you can see from, from this list, we've got regular figures, we've got deluxe figures. I'm not making any kind of distinction between like, oh, well, I'm not going to include these because that's not fair. No, no, no. You're all equal in my eye. I And this is a deluxe figure, so of course it should be better. But you know what? <laughs> it is. He's got the different heads, both of them beautifully sculpted with the very modern Frank Castle sort of looking face. So first of all, we've got the bike, which is very standard. Uh, you know, it's the basic bike they use big like fat boy handlebars which are kind of fun he's got the little nice extras like the punisher logo on the speedometer he's got the uh the, the different license plate it's it's a cool look i do think hasbro could do so much more with these bikes they could add so much more paint to them they could really go the extra mile with the with the bikes and they they don't but it's still a really nice display piece but then really where this character comes into his own is the sculpt here. As I said, it's the very modern Punisher sculpt. He's got just the, the smeared, like painted Punisher t-shirt. He has that real weathered, withered Frank Castle look with, uh, you know, the, the, the widow's peak kind of hairstyle. He's all beaten up and bandaged. And he's just got that, that face that looks like he's seen too much. And I love that. And the fact that now we can have the Ghost Rider Rider, the Punisher Rider Rider, and the Cosmic Ghost Rider Rider it means we get a wonderful like timeline transition of this character. And I just think this, this there's a lot of care and attention that has gone into this. Plus the accessories out the wazoo. We've got the uh, the Viking helmet. We've got a machete, which just looks badass. You, you know he's going to mess someone up with that. And oh, Dude, a sawn-off double-barrel shotgun, Mwah! that's like full-on Evil Dead, you know, S-Mart's top of the line. I think this just looks great. Almost, almost, and I'd see if you go with me on, on this or, or not. I think he looks a little too good in that the, the face looks the, the face looks too realistic. He, he, he maybe sort of stands out a bit too much to the more comic booky looking Marvel Legends. For example, like you, you've got Rage here who's very comic booky and, and I love him for it, but they almost look like they don't quite fit, but they do fit enough. They fit enough and they work and look beautiful. Ah, love that Punisher. Now we've got a figure that some might argue shouldn't be as high, but I adore this figure. It is the Retro Mysterio, a full-on repaint. That's that's all it is. So I totally get it if, if, if folks are like, wait, how can you put this figure higher than like wholly new original sculpts and stuff? Well, I'll tell you why, because it's my list. And this guy sparks so much joy. I've given him some extra blue kind of effects on, on his hands. He would have benefited from having those, but he has the lovely translucent uh, effects around his feet there. He's got the Quentin Beck translucent head under the fishbowl, which actually I put on the other Mysterio because that uh, the original Mysterio has a more transparent fishbowl, so you can see the Quentin Beck head. This one is more like a pearl. It's like a pearl in the ocean. You can't see through it, but it's good because it's different. It makes him different from the original. Just like with the Kingpin, this was the color scheme I wanted when we got our original Mysterio. I was like, oh, where's where's the gold? Well, yeah, why, where's the, the wash on the body? Because again, the, the, the body has, has you know, the clear uh, crisscross pattern on there. There's so much to like here for this figure. Throwing in the, uh, the the woo -woo -woo effects as well. He still suffers with the same thing that the Deluxe Apocalypse does, where the cape can kind of come up 
a little bit. People hate plastic capes. I never did hate plastic capes, but now that I'm playing around with them more, I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of get the annoyance with the plastic capes. But I will allow it and I will forgive it because this Mysterio, I don't know why I'm putting him there, you can't see him. But this Mysterio, great. Absolutely adore him. Just the whole Spider-Man retro wave. It's not really a wave anymore, is it? It's just like, a, it, it's a line. It's a line of figures. But what a line it is. Bring on more of those for 2021. What's up, Dave? This is uh, my favorite Marvel legend of the year. Moon Knight, Walmart exclusive. Yes, it's got a custom cape I made myself. But it's still a Marvel legend. And a great one. Speaking of retro 90s figures, we have the Deluxe War Machine. Let me move Mysterio out of the way. Gosh, I, I should have moved the camera further back just so I can fit in all the different characters because this is just an amazing lineup. The War Machine was really spoiling us with accessories, just absolutely incredible what they decided to do with kind of like, it's not a random figure. I mean, War Machine is popular, but it's not like he's a, a big heavy hitter, you know. He has a big gun, but he's not the big gun, if you know what I'm saying. But they were like, no, you know what? Let's just go ham on War Machine. And they did. You got, you got the, the, the roadie head as well, which can go on there. And it's just all about the effects. He's got the rocket boosters, which I put one on, on Green Goblin. But then, of course, you, you've got like the, the... And you've got the... And you've got the... Just all of those together look so badass. I love it. And just the fact that his his suit of armor sculpt is the full-on 90s Iron Man style. This also gets us hype because we're like, oh, they can do a proper 90s Iron Man with this as well, which I think rumors would have you believe that that is, that is what they're going to do. We'll hopefully, hopefully get an Iron Man wave in 2021. And that will be very, very exciting. If this is what we can expect from that wave... Oh boy, it's going to be a good time. Hello, David Model Behavior. I am Ben. This is my uh, submission for the Figure of the Year Award. I'm not sure this is too late because of how time zones work, but uh, for me, the one Figure of the Year, hands down, War Machine. I mean, there's no real competition. He's got great sculpt work. He's a cool retool. He's got a butt ton of accessories. And, you know, it's War Machine, because why not? He's pretty cool. I've got the cool smoke effects. So, yeah. All right, top three now. And coming in first, we have the Demo Goblin, the Builder figure. And we haven't had many Builder figures in this list. We've had a few Deluxe figures, so I guess they're very, very similar. Demo Goblin, there's so much going for him from a personal affection standpoint. You know, I, I love my 90s characters. If you watch enough of my shows, you know that. So this is pure 90s right here, straight from the Maximum Carnage storyline as well. I'm finally able to almost complete that Maximum Carnage uh, sort of display. Hopefully next year we'll give us Shriek and Carrion and we can get that much closer. But Demo Goblin, he's a repainted Green Goblin with a few extra sort of accessories and changes, but what great changes. The gnarly, terrifying looking Demo Goblin face, the beautiful, beautiful flame glider, and also the fact that in doing this glider, they've perfected the, the style of glider where they can give it this great stand as well, which works so well. Just throw in the claws and the extra details, and the fact that he just reeks of 90s nostalgia, of course Demo Goblin makes it very high on the list. Hello, Model Behavior. This is my favorite 2020 Marvel Legends of the Year. Coming in now at number two, we have the Retro Vintage Doom. Now look, don't get mad, all right? This could have easily been the Super Scroll Wave Doom, all right? I'm actually not differentiating. These are two and the same, but if I have to choose one, I will choose the more brightly colored one with the most accessories. That's just me, all right? But don't don't say like, you know, oh, the, the Super Scroll Wave Doom wasn't even in the top 25? Yes, he was. That These figures are one and the same, but I have to choose one, so I'm going to choose the animated sort of retro looking Doom. If he wasn't here, the Super Scroll Wave Doom would be number two. Okay, so it's, it's, an, e it's an either or. They're, they're two and the same. Or if, if I actually included both, I'd have Super Scroll as number three, retro as number two. Because yes, he's a little goofier than the Super Scroll Wave one, but I love 
the the goofiness. I love the brightness. I love the fact that we've got a little bit of material, a bit a bit of a cloth, uh, you know, accessory in there. And uh, people do tell me, uh, probably quite rightly, that if he has the cloth, he shouldn't have the cape. That's like the cloth is the Doom bot, and the cape is the real Doom. I like having them both because it's just more. It's more bang for your buck. It's it's more to appreciate. Plus, he's got the 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 swirly effect around his hand. He's got the spell book. The other spell book being the, um, oh gosh, I, I, I forget. Um, but the carnage, the, 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 the car dark hold. There you go. Thank you. The other, the other book being the dark hold book means that I can put the, the new carnage with that. And just, it's just so great. Plus it gives us this wonderful hint that we're going to get more retro fantastic four figures next year. And if they do that, I ain't going to be mad. My figure of the year is the Punisher Rider. And finally, folks, this is it. My number one figure of the year. We have the Venom Pool Builder figure. And this was a tough call. It really was. Because one thing that, you know, I have to say is the character of Venom Pool means nothing to me. I don't play Contest of Champions, if, if that's where he's from. I don't know this character. But I know what I like in action figures. And this thing is just insane. First of all, he's huge. He's huge and big and chunky. Then he, you know, he's he's a symbiote, so come on, symbiotes are fun. We all love that. See, so he's Venom, but he's Deadpool, kind of like Cosmic Ghost Rider. He's all the things that people like. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know that some people don't like those characters, but mostly he's, he's all the popular things mashed up into one great thing and what a great thing he is plus he has accessories as well he's got the swords that are removable i love weapons that actually are practical you can you can sheathe them you can take them out and he has he has the the clawed hand and he has the fisted hand as well so well the, the fist holding hand so <laughs> don't do a screen grab of that so you know uh, it's such a wonderfully dynamic pose you can have him in with one sword drawn and one hand reaching back like the actual articulation is perfect to get him in that pose then of course just the expressive face with the pink tongue and also just I, I i feel while holding this this figure the texture the actual texture of the figure it's like he is wearing real sort of kevlar material plus you've got the frankenstein's monster style stitching of his costume it, it's just got so much going on that i really love so much so that i actually don't care that i don't have affection for the character ha having the figure makes me love the character and that is saying a heck of a lot so I've got no problem putting this guy as number one for 2020, even though he's not a comic book character. I think he might, he might have appeared. Or certainly versions of Deadpool with the Venom symbiote have appeared. But this specific one, I've not read. So this is, this is a, a very unusual figure for number one. But wholeheartedly, I got no problem with this being my number one figure of 2020. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I know there are a few figures that maybe were conspicuous by their absence. Uh, the uh, Absolute Carnage Carnage wasn't on the list. Great figure, beautiful sculpt, but just like, it doesn't spark joy. I prefer the 90s Carnage. The Retro Spider-Man. I feel like it's it's a good Spider-Man, but I want a 90s Spider-Man with, with bigger eyes. And the, the, the figure of the year, the Strong Guy Builder figure, which was the voted figure of the year, doesn't even appear in my top 25 because I just, the shoulders look odd. Uh, he looks too plasticky. Not my jam, but you know, I can see why he was so popular, especially for folks who wanted to complete their teams. So I figure, I figure he's got enough recognition. Not a bad figure, but not even in my top 25. These encompass my favorite characters, my favorite nostalgia, and just the work and the brightness that has gone into them. Oh, just playing around with them and posing them and doing this video reminds me about how much I love these figures. And it also reminds me how much I love doing this channel and all the interaction with you guys. Thank you so much for everyone who contributed your videos that I could put in and, you know, make this a community because that's what I love. It's it's not me just screaming into the void. <laughs> there actually, there are, you know, people who we've got interactions. We've got the Discord where there's a, a link below. You can chat to people on, on there. And I just love being able to 
bring people in, like doing the what bar segments, doing these you know extra things for, for these countdowns. It has been an absolute joy doing this show in 2020. And there's going to be so much more to come in 2021. So folks, thanks for joining me for my top 25. Coming up next, we've got the Data Blast. Check the names of the creators and go give them a follow because they're doing amazing work. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior. The biggest unanswered question is where is the money? The biggest unanswered question is where is the money? question is where is the money? Where is the blood?